the People now presents Dr. William Thorpe, head of the International Medical Association. <laughs> Dr. Thorpe. Thank you. I speak for the Association's Committee for Refugee Doctors. Our purpose is to find professional openings in this country for those physicians and surgeons who have been driven from their own countries. However, these gentlemen have no wish to compete with our own doctors in the medically well-serviced metropolitan areas. But there are hundreds of towns and communities throughout rural America entirely without medical service. It is to such towns and hamlets that I am expressing this message. These men, grateful for the sanctuary that America has afforded them in their hour of need, are prepared to accept posts in just these places and ask nothing beyond their actual living needs and the chance to be of service. The next voice you hear will be Dr. Rudolf Preussner, formerly of Prague. Dr. Preussner. You people out there want two things to know. First, what kind of a doctor is this whose voice we hear? And second, is he a good doctor? The first question I answer quickly, I am a specialist in obstetrics. Uh, eight years, I do nothing but this. And very good success with a stork. <laughs> <laughs> and the second question, is he a good doctor? Can I answer that? Yes. Since I have great pride in my profession, I can. Yes. I am a good doctor. I hope you will somewhere let me prove that I do not boast. Thank you, Dr. Preissner. Now I present to you a most eminent specialist, Dr. Karl Brown of Vienna. <laughs> Dr. Brown. There's so much that I'd like to tell you about Dr. Brown that I... <laughs> I honestly don't know where to begin. Perhaps I'd better just sum it all up by saying that 20 years ago, like many other American doctors, I journeyed to Vienna for the express purpose of taking postgraduate work under him in his famous clinic there. Dr. Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, I am more used to the stethoscope and ether cone than I am to the microphone. But it is not ethical that I expect you to buy me like a cat in a bag. Yes? No. So I tell you about myself. I am over 60. That is not very young. But it is not too old. Only last week I had a complete examination. Which everyone should have at least twice a year. And they tell me I am sound yet in the more important parts, if one can believe doctors. <laughs> For many years in Vienna, I conducted an orthopedic clinic, diseases of the bone, and I worked most successfully with children. It has been my privilege to help many little cripples to walk again. Oh, yes, I forget. <clears throat> I'm a fine father. I must warn you, there are two of us. That means two expenses if you send for me. Naturally, we cannot separate, my daughter Lenny and I. After all, we have gone through together. In Vienna, she was very gay. When Vienna was gay. But now she settles down to work by my side. She is studying to be a nurse and learning very fast. And such a musician. You should hear her once play a Brahms concerto. Every note is like a kiss. What a beautiful country, Papa. So lovely. We are lucky. Two thousand miles we travel. No soldiers do we see. No frontiers do we cross. No custom house. No guards. America. 
Yes, and we are lucky, too, that we go to such a small village. Large, dirty cities I don't like. The long lane turns at last, Lynchon. Here, at last, we find peace. Yes. Yeah. How you doing, folks? Fine, fine. Beautiful scenery. What hour do we arrive at uh, Asheville Forks? Still 9.40. Then I have time to take a little nap, yes? Sure, loads of it. We may not be on time anyway. I thought in America everything is on time. This is not the super chief, buddy. This is just a branch line. Take one? <laughs> Thanks. No, not without a little gin on the side. <laughs> you put your feet up here. I'll just put this over you. Like a little brown hen, you fuss over your old papa. Until it gets dark, I study a little with my books. That is good. That chapter about the post-operative technique. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to study when such a wonderful country runs past your window. Miss Swan? That is not good, Lynchon. I know. He is gone. The world you knew together is gone. It is better not to look back. Look instead ahead. With the eyes, yes, but always the heart looks back. If only he could know how all through my life I loved him. Never do I forget his sacrifice for us. Except for that, we would not be here. And he wouldn't be dead. We have each other, Lynch. Our life begins again in a happy land with happy people. Try to remember that also. to welcome strangers. Huh. They're sure going to like it here. I bet you $10 they don't stay a week. Not that I've got $10 or anybody else in this dog gasket. Shut up, Nuck. Remember the last one? I'll just get a good night's sleep, gentlemen, and start my rounds in the morning. Comes morning. Where is he? Whoosh. Over the hills and far away. We gotta stay. It's a lot of sick people. You keep your trap shut when they get here, understand? None of your belly aching. Thirty years I've been tending this community. All of a sudden, I'm not good enough. No, indeed. Got to send for some foreign pill dispenser with an MD, PDQ, we know, back of his name. You're a vet, Nock, and you're okay with cows and horses and ordinary human ills. But things have been piling up around here that need real doctrine. Dust pneumonia, fracture cases. My little girl at a piano. Sit down and play drums like a kiss. Ah! You call that doctoring, eh? All right, never mind. Here comes the train. Now remember, keep your mouth shut and let me handle this. Go right ahead, Bob. It's your picnic. Well, aren't you going to help me? Sure, sure. Well, then go on out there and crank up the jalopy. I sent the telegram. Well, not a very pleasant night. A bit of a storm. A bit. I think it is a whole big storm. Is it like this all the time? No, this is very unusual weather. Well, I hope so. Oh, this is my daughter, Lynn. How do you do? She's a boiling son. Okay, now. I'm Dr. Atterbury. He's a local vet. So, may I call you my colleague? Yes? <laughs> colleague? Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> I've been called worse than that in my time. Well, come on, folks. You better get your handkerchiefs. Give you a welcome. 
But the influenza kept them home. Influenza? Are there many cases? Only an epidemic. So, uh, we fixed up the house. Hope you'll like it. On the way is the Stebbins place. He and his missus and two kids are laid up. I thought that... Of course. Taken out of the bed. Got any cheese cloth, Joe? In the kitchen. <laughs> Doctor, how is he? Pneumonia. The dust. There's hot bricks on the stove. Doctor, don't. Don't bother with me. My little girl. The best thing I can do for her is get her mama well, yeah? Very serious dislocation, but we fixed that. Oh. Come, we put you on the table. No, 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 you must not move. We fixed it. Uh, another table, please, up here. What do you want another table for? He ain't that long. Please, he can't stand anymore. Just one more stop. So you have stayed at every house we go to. Well, I haven't heard him complain. He knows these are all emergency cases. He is one old man, not a whole hospital staff. He'll never complain. He's a doctor. He can't say no. But his daughter can, and I'm ordering you to take us home. Babylonian. Who lives here? You do, brother. This is your house. Dirtier and better than the last. Who does she think she is? The Empress of Russia? Not much of a house, I'll admit. We tried to fix it up for you. Here, sollen wir leben? Das ist die Anun für Schämtheit. What's she squawking about? Excuse me, please. She's very tired. I know. You're both all in. We'll just show you what's what, and then we'll leave you. Now get the stuff out of the car. Put it away. She's put right now, son. I'm not going to break my arm cranking her up again. You live near here, too? We live here. This is my house. But uh, oh, don't worry, we've moved upstairs. Got our own private entrance and everything. Won't bother you a bit. This is all yours. Here, I'll show you the layout. Find the beds are made up all nice and fresh. And there's plenty of clean towels in the bathroom, lady. And the women folk fixed up some food and stuff. It, uh... A little dusty. Yeah. But milk. That's one thing we have. Nothing else out here. It's good milk. How'd you like a nice glass? Oh. Uh, sour. Well, anyway, we got good running water. Of course, uh, have to strain it through a towel or something. That's, that's what we do. Be all right in a couple of days. I'll show you how this stove works. Oh, no, no, please, not tonight. 
I've seen too much already. Don't guess it. He, at my age, a bellhop for foreigners. All right, now get the hay. You're darn tootin'. So long, folks. Before I turn in, there's something I'd like to say. It's been a tough night for you, and you were both swell. I'm mighty thankful. You can see what we're up against, Doc. Yes, yes. Things are very bad. Oh, this is horrible. How can people live in such filth? Oh, you're going to be all right when we get this dust cleared away. is isn't going to be as hard as you think. I guess we don't notice it so much. We're kind of used to it. You'll feel better after a night's rest. Sleep works wonders, doesn't it, Doc? Um, God, it's good, Papa. Elmo sent me a line, lad. He can't be there. I'm passing. What did she say? Forgive her, please. She's very tired. Her nerves, you understand. We speak about it tomorrow, yes? I know she's had a tough night, but... No, no, no. You've been very, very kind and thoughtful. Good night. Good night, Doc. Who are you listening for, not Santa Claus? Well, what did I tell you? They're going to pull out tomorrow. I tell you, I heard them say so. They're down there chewing the fat now. Shh. Oh, come away from there. It's mostly to that foreign double talk anyway. But now and then they slip in a word of English. They'll be gone tomorrow, or my name ain't Atterbury. The old geese is willing to give it a go, but the Empress of Russia says, don't die. Oh, Warm up the jalopy, Nunk. I'll see if they're ready for church. They ain't listening for no church bells, son. They're getting ready for the choo-choo. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ready for church? I'm sorry, Mr. Phillips, but we think it more better that we do not even go to church with you. Oh, but everybody's waiting to meet you. The whole town's turned out to see the new doctor. I know. Don't think too bad of us. We are not going to stay. We cannot. Avalanche. Today we go. Oh, but doctor, it's hardly fair to judge us by last night. You know it won't always be like that. Oh, please, Mr. Phillips, do not plead with him. He would gladly kill himself for others, but I will not let him. We would like to do what is right, but... Well... Can't chain you here. It's a free country. He is right, lady. It is well we should remember that. Oh, Papa has his car. Morning, folks. Hey, she blows, Bob. Oh, come on, son. Let you and I listen to the sermon. After the death storm, the minister always preaches a rips in order. It is settled. After all, it is just courtesy. Yeah, we go to church. And we try to explain to the good people here why we cannot remain. In his inscrutable wisdom, the Lord has seen fit to smite us with terrible storm. But it is not for us to complain. He moves in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. The Lord may have sent this tribulation upon us to test your faith. And there are some among us who feel that we had a superabundance of his testing. That after what we went through last year, but be that as it may, faith alone will not take us out of it. We will need courage in our hearts and shovels in our hands. Today on this blessed Sabbath, God's sun is shining, 
or the storm has blown itself out. Let us pray that we likewise may have the bitterness and sorrow from our hearts, Blue Noir. Last night they came into our midst a stranger. And if we need an example of true courage and helpfulness, it has already been set by him. Aye, brethren, the Lord heard our prayers. We asked for a doctor. And he sent us not only a doctor, but a man. Last night when the storm was holding, he came into our midst, tired and worn out by a trip across the continent. And we out waiting even for a dish of tea. He promptly gave succor to those who were sore beset. I speak of Dr. Carl Braun, who sits among you. And home when services are over, he will all welcome in person. We give thanks to the Lord that he sent us such a man and his fine young daughter to help us. May they remain with us always, honored by all, and blessed by God. Amen. 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 When the minister is alone, you tell him yes? Please, Janie, listen to me. Papa, do you want me to tell him? I'm glad to see you. Reverend, you sure are hitting on all cylinders today. <laughs> <coughs> Dr. Brown. Oh, good morning. Dr. Brown, I heard you was a great surgeon. If you could just take a look at my boy. Don't you want no more doctors looking at me no more. Hey, Nunk, wait for me. Hey, Nunky. What is it, old-timer? He don't have to limp like that all his life, doctor. He could be made to walk good again. I would have to examine him first. It is possible that an operation... It could... is possible, doctor, I know. I had him to a clinic once, and the fellow said that he could be cured by an operation. Then why didn't you take... Oh, we didn't have no money for the hospitals, doctor. We ain't got none now. But you could look at him, and you could do it. You said over the radio that you was pretty near always successful with children. When I found you was coming here, I felt it was an answer to my prayers. I already told Billy that you could fix him up. But I haven't even examined him yet. But you will, Doctor. Oh, the poor little fella. He's scared of doctors. There's been a couple of them that fooled around and hurt him and didn't do no good. But I told him you was a great surgeon come all the way from Vienna just to make him well. But, I... but you could operate on him, Doctor. You could make him walk good again. You could do it easy. Oh, please, Doctor. All, please. Right, all right, all right. I will look him over. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Can nothing be done about this terrible dust? No. Just wait till the wind lets up and then dig ourselves out, like they're all doing. Are we ready to go now? I'll have a look at the boy. It'll only take an hour. Oh, but you said... Well, what can I do? The mother begged me. I'll only be an hour. All right. Uh, shall I wait here? No. Perhaps you'll drive Lenny home. Sure. Glad to. Thank you very much. Fine old man, your father. Like to have me drive you around a bit? Sort of get your bearings? I'm afraid there wouldn't be time. Uh, I still have some packing to do. Haven't changed your mind, huh? No. Hear what the minister said about your father? Yes. That didn't cut any ice either, eh? Ice? I don't know what you mean. I mean, that didn't make any difference. I'm sorry. It's no use, really. We're going. What was the name of that radio program you were on? Oh, you mean We the People? Yeah. We the People. I left holding a bag. Bag? Skip it. You are angry with us. Disappointed. Oh, I don't blame you, but... Look, let's not talk about it, shall we? Oh, but I want you to understand. You need here a younger man than my father. There was you... a younger man on the air just ahead of you. A lot of folks around here figured we ought to send for him. But I said send for the older man with his daughter. Figured you might be some help. Oh, 
Forget oh, it. I'm not going to try and sales talk you on staying. I'll even help you pack. Uh, what kind of a car is this? Jalopy. Jalopy, an Italian car. Yeah. First cousin to an Asado Francini. Well, that is the kind of automobile we have in Vienna. Anschluss. Can you drive? Oh, no, we have a chauffeur. Oh, Fritzy, huh? Eh? No, his name was Fritz. <laughs> <laughs> I say something funny. <laughs> yes? Yeah, you slay me. So, I'm almost past. I wish that my father would not be late. Just can't wait to beat it, can you? Beat it? If you're going to stick around, I'd teach you the American language. But what's the use? You're going to scram anyway. If you could only take it like the old gent. Take? Yeah. See that? But she's sweet. Who is she? My grandmother. She came out here in 61. By covered wagon. There were Indians to fight then, and dangers and famine to meet. Little dust couldn't run her out. She could take it. She was a pioneer. Yes, but when you are a refugee, it is different. The pioneers have everything to gain. We have lost everything. Why, well, I figured you stopped being a refugee when you came through Ellis Island. There's no reason why you can't start being a pioneer now. Even in a dust bowl. That used to be topsoil. Good, rich earth. Find stuff to have your roots in, if you had any roots. Oh, I'm sorry. I know how you must feel. I don't altogether blame you for wanting to pull out. But I wish you'd give it a try for maybe a week or ten days. You've no, no idea. No, not a week. Not ten days. Not even one day we go. If you'd only... It is no use to argue. You're asking me. But I'm not asking you. You see, my friend, the surgery is very simple. But underlying the paralysis, there's a definite psychosis. You don't say. Psychosis? Now, where would a kid pick up a foreign disease like that? Papa, you are ready to go now, yes? Please, Lynchett, one moment. Now, Dr. Arterbury, I will need all the things on this list by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Today's Sunday, brother. Drug stores are shut like a clam. I am certain all doors will be open to you, Dr. Arterbury. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, colleague, leave it to me. It is a very interesting case, a little crippled boy. I have a case exactly like him in 23. The prognosis is identical. It is a partial paralysis. All right, Papa, you tell me all about it on the train. Yes, yes. You see? What train? Papa, we're leaving today. No, Lynch, we're not leaving today. I promised the mother I operate tomorrow. But that means we have to stay. For how long? Oh, perhaps a week, ten days. Oh, but it is no use to argue. <laughs> I said something funny, perhaps. No, Doc. Must be an echo in this room. Echo? sure knows these onions. You help me like a nurse of ten years' experience. You will walk again, yes? Oh, of course. 
I do this many times. <laughs> he will walk again soon and without a brace. I'd like to see that. Well, perhaps, as Mr. Phillips says, we stick around and maybe we see him walk. Yes? And there are ways of licking this thing, men. Irrigation ditches, windbreaks, contour plowing. Others have done it and saved their land, and so can we. And there's no guesswork about it. It's all right here in black and white from the Department of Agriculture. Listen, John, I ain't got nothing against all them pamphlets. But what I want to know is this. Can the Department of Agriculture bring us maybe six inches of rain? I wish they could. But if we did what they told us, we might learn how to use what little rain we do get. These plans have been drawn up by experts. They know our problems. There ain't no college professor going to teach me how to farm my land. Oh, oh shut right. up. Let's listen. How much land you got left that hasn't blown away? <laughs> Look, men, let's quit arguing and kidding ourselves. We're all in the same boat. We're all going to sink unless we stick together. Every one of us has been served with a dispossessed notice. Not by Uncle Sam or a bank or some mortgage company, but by a little old gal we've been kicking in the teeth. Mother Nature. We've had enough talk. How about getting some work done? Are you going to pitch in and help? Well, well we can try it. Anyway. All right, count me in, too. Anything to save the darn land, save the day. digging ditches, like he said. But I'd feel better if it had clouded up some. We'll have rain. We've got to have rain. Thunder, unless we can borrow some tractors. Well, what do you think I'm going to Harrisburg for? To see the movies? Don't let the heat get down your collar, bud. That a boy, Nunk. Every little drop helps. Tell the Department of Agriculture not to send us any more bulletin or no more bull. Get in. Them panthers are raining on us. They ain't got no moisture. Good morning. Morning, Lenny. Gosh, you're up kind of early, aren't you? Oh, look up. What's that? Well, you have a long drive ahead of you, so I fixed you something to eat on the way. Oh, that's very nice of you. Thanks. Today will be another, how do you say it, uh, a scorcher? Yeah. Afraid so. There is the God of Rain, so I'll try and pray to him. Send it special delivery, will you, lady? <laughs> what we tried on the side of that hill. Yes, know. I know. I got a report on it from one of our field men. Yeah, but according to your pamphlet... Now, look, figured... Phillips, the trouble with you farmers is that you're always too late. I'd say in your case, about 20 years too late. Well... Now, I don't doubt that you've all been sweating blood, but all this isn't going to help. Well, look, mister, our land means yes, a lot I mean. to us. Your land is located in this sector, which the government considers doomed. Right in here. Not even worth saving. Doomed? What do you mean? Well, doomed, man. Doomed. That's plain English, isn't it? I mean, it's worn out, worked out, barren. The next dust storm will blow whatever topsoil there is left, even on the best of these farms, clear out of the country. That's what you think. It's the considered opinion of our experts. There's just one thing that you fellas can do, if you're smart. What, for instance? Quit breaking your backs and your hearts trying to hold back a desert. Move off the land. Look here. There's an enormous dam being built right here. There are great tracts of fertile soil just waiting for settlers. There'll be cheap power... Yeah, and... I know all about the dam, but that's in Oregon. We're 1,500 miles from there. We'll help you. We'll see that Are you... you crazy, mister? You think you're talking to a sharecropper? We're farmers. We own our own land. 
like our fathers and our grandfathers. You can't shove us around to match pretty pins on your maps. We're not swivel chair farmers, and we're not lick chet. Same thing? Well, you're from Nashville Forks, ain't you? Oh, it must have hit you fellas pretty bad down there. Yeah. Hi, fellas. Wind's blowing up again, eh? Well, you ain't aiming to drive back to your farm tonight, mister, are you? Sure. Making about two hours. Why not? Save time by staying put. Let the wind blow your farm back to you. <laughs> Anybody else think it's funny? Did you hurt yourself? No, I'm all right. But the barn. Make it that much easier for the wind to blow down. If you want to see my father, he's out with Mr. Atterbury. See? I make curtains for the kitchen. Don't be a sucker. Don't waste your time. Why don't you pack your things and clear out? You and your old man had the right hunch when you first got here. You want to pull out the same day. Well, I'm sorry I ever talked you into staying. I will make you some very hot, very strong, and very black coffee. I'm not so drunk, I don't know what I'm saying. They showed me maps and charts of our land today. It isn't worth saving, see? I do not believe that. Well, I do. I know when I'm licked. Move off the land, the fella says. It's dead. It is dead. We're all dying on our feet and haven't got sense enough to know it. Well, why don't you clear out while the clearing's good? We'll be following you pretty soon anyway. It is you who talk like a refugee now. That's right. That's what they want us to be. I want to move us to Oregon. You are ordered to go? It is a law? No, we could stay here and starve, I guess. And can you not stay and go on fighting for your land like you've been doing? I haven't seen you like this before. You didn't talk like this when you told me about the pioneers. I was giving you a pep talk. Do you know what that means? Yes, I have learned that. And I give you one now, and it is better for you even than black coffee. You are the leader here. All these farmers, they look to you. They do what you say. They feel what you feel. Now, if there's no law which makes you move... Our law is written by the wind, the dust. the colors off their stupid charts. It feels like rain. It's wet and cool like rain. Listen, Lenny, you can almost hear the earth drinking it up. I don't hear anything but my heart beating. <laughs> oh, you're getting drenched. You better go in. It feels good. I like it. So do I. Who is that uh, rain god, Lenny? Jupiter Pluvius. Yeah, that's a fella. Keep her going, Jupo boy. Keep her going. It will be all right now. This will save our land. Our land? As you say, I have begun to take root. Golly, I've done some sparking in my time, but gosh darn it, I always had sense enough to come in out of the rain. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? 
What, a rain or a foolishness? Both. And it isn't foolishness, is it? I guess I'm going to find out what happens to a fellow when he's kissed a girl right under her father's nose. Better find out what happens when you kiss the girl under her own nose. You were surprised to see us kissing in the rain? Kissing? No. In the rain? Yes. You want to start out with pneumonia? You don't think he'll catch cold? If I know anything about my colleague, Dr. Otterbury, he has by now prescribed for him a large, uh, what is it? Oh, yes. A large slug of rye. Oh, Papa, he's so... He's so... Yes, yes, I know. He is so wonderful. You are so wonderful. It is all so wonderful. <laughs> and now I tell you my wonderful news. It is from one of the greatest clinics in America. They want me to join their staff. But this came a week ago. I remember it. Why didn't you tell me? Because then I was not certain if you want to leave here. Now I am certain you want to remain. But you are not going to refuse such a splendid charge. No, no. But there is no hurry. They give me 90 days to consider. So I wait until you are married, yes? Mm -hmm. Just listen to that rain. Nothing could sound so beautiful. What say? Come again. The rain, hear it? Symphony Orchestra couldn't make sweeter music than that. What? What say? I said the rain on the roof is lovely to hear. Can't hear a word you say in the kind of the ding busted rain. Oh, no. oh, I'm glad I'm not in love. Good day, Doctor. How are you? Good morning. Really? Don't worry. I ran 15 balls 40 years ago. Oh, yeah? Yes, sir. Hiya, Doc. Hello, How are Doc. You? Doc, glad to see you. Have a glass of beer. Yeah, that sounds good. Hey, now, your shot. Hold your horses, will you? Doc, come on over here. Draw up a chair and learn something. Yes, sir. And lay him so pretty for you, Doc. Oh, there's nothing to it. Uh-uh. Huh? Oh. Uh-uh. Why not make both balls? Both balls? Well, maybe Doc thinks he can make it. All right. There you are. It's all yours, brother. Well, I try. <laughs> here, here, you, you don't hold a cue right. You'll never make it that way in the... I'll be done. Please. Well, oh, my God. God. Hey, he's all right. I don't know about that. Boy, hey. that was well, well, I didn't see well. it. Put it in now. Come on now. Yeah, sorry. Oh, boy! I haven't played in several years. Doc, when did you ever find time to study medicine? Well, Doc, when's the wedding going to be? Two weeks from Sunday. Your daughter's got a fine young fella. They don't come any better than John. We're very happy about it. Hi, boys. Oh, honey, Doc. Oh, just save me day. a trip. Got a letter for you. Oh, thank you. Lots of foreign stamps on it, too. If I could have them, maybe for my kid, he collects it. Not much of a hobby in my way of thinking, but if it's good enough for Roosevelt, it's good enough for my kid. Hey, Doc, it's your shot. Will you finish for me, please? I have to go home. But 
how can we be sure that it's true? They told us Eric was killed. But it is true, Lynch. You read in the letter. Dr. Tarbo saw him in Russia. He escaped, thank God. We owe him our lives, Lynch. I know. I, too, say thank God. But I feel wicked and horrible, for in my heart I cannot be happy. What shall I do, Papa? How shall I tell John? He knows. I told him. He understands. But you don't understand. But don't you? You love Harry. You were to have been married. I know, but that was two years ago in another life. In another world. I know how you feel, Lynchie. It is not easy to know where loyalty ends and love begins. It's like someone who returns from the grave. I cannot help you. Perhaps when Eric comes to America, he will understand. Oh. He risked everything for us. We owe him our lives. I will always remember that. And try to forget. This thing out. It still seems all wrong. I know. But try to understand. We'd be a lot better off, you and I, Lenny, without so much understanding. We get all tangled up in other people's feelings, with duties and obligations. We know where our happiness lies. Why don't we take it? Perhaps because we know it's not altogether ours. Yeah, maybe something I could fight. But I can't. It's like that storm outside. How long before he gets here? His boat gets to San Francisco next month. Send him a cable. Tell him you've changed your mind. Tell him it's too late. Tell him we're already married. Tell him anything. How can I? Go ahead, Lenny. You want to. You'll never know. No, John. We would. Please go now. Please don't stay anymore. Lainey. On a kind, on a fair. I begged you to go. I only wanted Oh, to... you want to comfort me, I know. But you cannot. We only make each other more unhappy. Oh, darling, please. Please go. I make no secret that I love you. And I cannot fight against you any more than you can fight against him or the wind. I think we're both crazy to let a ghost come between us. He's not a ghost. Look, this is Eric. He's alive. Would it comfort you to hear that I hate him? 
It would be a lie. If my fiancé, I loved him. He's fine and brave. And without him, my father and I would have been dead. You win. You're a lucky guy. Gentlemen, this is coming to you directly from the very heart of the stricken area. I'm looking down the main street of Asheville Forks where the storm hit the hardest. And believe me, it looks like an earthquake hit this place rather than just a dust storm. In a few moments, I'll let you hear some of the actual voices of the people who lived through these past few days of devastation. You will hear history in the making. Asheville Forks is packing up lock, stock, and barrel and is moving on up into Oregon. How about you, sir? Will you say a few words to our listening audience about this great trek that you're contemplating? I ain't no Charlie McCarty. I ain't got time. It'll only take a moment. Just tell us in your own words about your experiences during this calamity. In my own words? Yes. All right. You asked for it, brother. Well, the wind was howling like a... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. That's very graphic indeed. I call him as I see him, brother. Yes, I see you. Quiet. What if we don't feel like hitting the trail for Oregon? What if we figure our land here is still good? Look at it, Higgins. What do you aim to grow on it? Seaweed? Well, we can we can always stay here and go on relief. Why not? Other people are doing it. That's right, you can do that. There's no compulsion in this. But as long as we have to move off the land, let's move like an army and not like rabble. Let's make it an advance, not a retreat. I don't want to go any more than the rest of you. Only a few months ago it was I that argued that we stay here and fight. Well, we fought and lost. That patch on the map is Oregon. That's 1,500 miles from here. That's a long haul in any man's country. But it's new land. And if we go together, stick together, and work together, and pool our monies and supplies, we can make it. That's fine, John, but what about our livestock? What are we going to put tractors when we get up to Oregon? And how much land do they give us, and what are we going to use for money? So we got to take your word for it, John, that this here Oregon is a land flowing with milk and honey, huh? There's no land anywhere worth a hoot till it's flowed with good, honest sweat. That's telling them, Bob. I would like to say a few words, if you will permit me. Go ahead, Doc. I'm speaking as one who knows what it means to be a refugee. Ain't no foreigner going to tell me where to go. Clint Higgins, you've got a short memory. You didn't talk that way the night you come over to the house because your kid's appendix bursted. No, sir. It was please then. Won't you come, Doc? And he did come in the middle of the night. Please, please. I do not know your farm problem so well as John, but I do know that he is right. I think it is wiser for you to argue less and start packing. No skin off his nose. He ain't going. Out of my way, colleague. Let me spit these eyes. You're going to spit in who's eyes? You big blubber mouth. You know everything, don't you? It ain't no secret, Nunk. We all knows he's joining up with a big clinic back east. He is in a pig's eye. Before that storm hit us, he was going to take that job. But now he says no so. He's willing to go with us folks to Oregon. That don't sound like any foreigner to me. Uh, all those in favor of going to Oregon, say aye. Aye! aye. Oregon it is! You're going to have milk in your coffee, hey, Joe? <laughs> God, 
Father of all mercies, we beseech thee to bless and guide this caravan of thy people setting out on a long journey to a promised land. Thou knowest, Lord, that many of the cars are in a deplorable condition. Afflict not thy people further with blowouts, burnt bearings, or broken axles. Prosper them, O Lord, on their new lands. That ere long they may send for us who are remaining here, bending thy good will. Amen. Amen. Here comes our brave leader. I hope he knows what he's doing. Called us refugees when we were leaving Vienna. But our future was brighter. We were coming to America. For these people, there must be a more tragic word than refugee. <laughs> This is the main number one exodus, brother, that Moses himself couldn't have done no better. Did he have to worry about tow cars, spare tires, gasoline? No, sir. He had a cinch compared to John. He's doing a fine job. He's carrying a great load on his shoulders. Yep. Needs all the help he can get, too. He needs hard out about, well, something none of my business. Please, no. Oh, I was thinking of another young fella. He had a big job, threw it up. Said he couldn't make the grade without the help of the woman he loved. Sure hope John don't have to, Kate. Leave this outfit in a heck of a shape. Are you going to ride with us most of the way now? I can take a head, sister. Drop me off the next stop. I'll ride in one of the other cars. <laughs> well, sir, I started in a subtile-like way. I gave her a wink, and I said, let me drive the bus, Lenny. Why don't you go forward and ride with John for a while? She never batted an eyelash. Then I started to warm up. And I gave her a great sales talk about you. A lollapalooza. But still no dice. Why don't you mind your own business? Leave her alone, can't you? I can take her and leave her. But can you? Huh. Ain't no female worth grieving over. Well, who's grieving over her? Shut up. Did you think of anything else to talk about? Yes, plenty. I was riding with Higgins in his outfit today. <laughs> that fella's doing a lot of talking. What's eating him now? Same old thing. California. The land of the golden sunshine. He's telling them all we ought to head west instead of north. Well, he's welcome to go and good riddance. Yep. But the trouble is, he ain't able to go by himself. He's trying to split up this outfit. <laughs> Do you know what I said to him? I said, you'll have to reckon with my nephew, John, first. He's kicked the prune juice out of bigger weasels than you. <laughs> that held him. you wanted to talk to me. Yep. 
want to ask you to quit making trouble. Listen, mister. Just because you're in the lead car don't prove you're running the whole shebang. There's a lot of fellows think the way I do. Now, what do you know about that? I know that one rotten apple can spoil a barrel. I'll just stay in line and quit shooting off your mouth. When we make camp tonight, if you got anything to say, I'll listen to you. I don't have to take orders from you. You're a fool, Higgins. This isn't my show, it's ours. I didn't ask to run it. But as long as I am running it, you're going to take orders from me and like it. Anyways, in California, they don't freeze to death. There's sunshine out there, and miles of orchards, and orange groves, and plenty of work picking fruit. His wife's cousin sent him a crate of oranges once, and ever since that, he's been yapping, California, California. Oh, what do you know about it, Nunk? You ain't never been there. No, but I have. Sure, there's miles of groves and orchards, but there's also about two or 300,000 migratory workers there. There isn't enough fruit for them to pick to make a living wage. Sure, we can go to California. But what good will it do us? We'll just become migrants, too, drifting up and down the state, following the crops. We're not fruit pickers, man. We're farmers. And up in Oregon, where we're heading for, there's land for us. Land that we can own and farm. There's a road due west from here, Higgins. Your oranges and sunshine, take it any time you want to. But quit stirring these people up. You ain't going to bulldoze me with that high and mighty talk. We're getting out of here. But not before you hand over that dough we chipped in. Now, one dime, Higgins. You know what that money's for. I suppose it wouldn't be for that little furrin dish that's strutting around your back. A bull's eye. That was a beaut right on his kisser. <laughs> Stubborn, stupid fools. Come, my impetuous young horses. If you know your Bible, you will remember that the children of Israel had trouble in the wilderness 40 centuries ago. Then they worshipped a golden calf. <laughs> now they worship a golden orange or a golden mirage. Well, if I remember correctly, Doc, Moses got good and sore at them, too. Yes, and he was punished. <laughs> He was allowed to see the promised land, but he never set foot in it. Well, that'll be okay with me, too, Doc. My heart won't be in it. freezes and another minute he fries. Nature's very generous to California. You know what I think? I think nature's cockeyed. They got all that snow up there in the hills where they don't need it. Why don't they chuck some down here in the desert where it'd be as welcome as gravy and potatoes? Yet. After today, there'll be a lot more men ready to listen to you. There better be. settle this right now, Mr. Phillips. No stalling. We want our dough and our supplies, and we don't want no part of Oregon. We sure don't. 
How about it, man? Listen, man. We've driven all day through a furnace. We've only just made camp. You're hot and tired and hungry. Go on back to your tents and let the women feed you. Take a swim. Cool off. We can get... All right, Higgins. You win. You lead them. Lead them where they're not wanted. Lead them where they'll starve. Lead them into the middle of Death Valley and let them rot for all I care. Where's our dough? You'll get it. Keep your hands off of that. It ain't all yours. You're not going to give this to him, son. You're not going to quit us now. I've taken all I can stomach. That's the money. Do what you like with it. Joe, what's the matter? What is happening? I promised land is on the fritz, Doc. And I don't want to see it. This money belongs to all of us, Higgins. And everybody will get the share if you give me a chance. Hang on to this, Joe. Bill, get them trucks. Say, buddy, it's going to take us a couple of hours to sort this stuff. We ain't going to sort it. We'll take it the way it is. Hold on a minute. This ain't all ours. We can't do that. I'm running this outfit, brother. If anybody here doesn't like it, just let me know. Is anything wrong? No, everything's just dandy. I was just taking a walk. And I was just taking a powder. Small world, isn't it? I don't know what you mean. I mean, I'm clearing out. I'm quitting. I'm through. Is that clear? Yes. Where are you going? What difference does that make? We don't take the same road. San Francisco is less than 200 miles from here. It's a clear day, Lenny. Maybe you can see the Golden Gate. It's not a clear day for me, John. I'm seeing things through a mist. What are we kidding ourselves for? Why don't you quit, too? There's a lot of things stronger than duty. And we're both crazy if we don't realize it. I want to run away, John, but I can't any more than you. It's easy to run away. I just found that out. And it'll be easy for you, too. It's time we started thinking about ourselves for a change and not others. Grab this chance to be free, Lenny. It'll never come again. Turn that car back, you yellow liver coot. Higgins are turning the camp wide open. That's okay with me and the lady. Let them stew in their own juice. We're calling it a day. You let him talk like this, Lenny? Answer me. Perhaps it is you who make him act and talk so. You're all wrong, Doc. It's the other way around. I'm trying to sell her a bill of goods. And how about your people, John? They don't mean a thing to me. You have no right to say that, John. Back there are 200 men, women, and children whose lives are just as much your sacred responsibility as a patient on the operating table. Maybe the patient isn't worth saving. That is not true, John. But even if it were, doctors don't tell their patients there is no hope. No, a doctor does not throw away his scalpel and say, I am tired, I I will call it a day. He does not quit, he fights. That's telling him, colleague. Yes, you could run away, but you could not escape. You could shout, I am free, but even the echoes would know you were lying. Lady, who's that? Look at her, John. She knows that duty is sometimes bitter and hard and cruel. She knows that better than you, John. Look into her eyes. You have a job to finish, John. So has Lady. He gave me the kisses. Did it stop you talking?
That looks like Philip's car. Don't look back, son. She's just... There's plenty to look ahead for. Beyond them hills lies Oregon. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Well, here we are. St. George Hotel. Do you think this is the right place, Papa? Well, that's what the council said. But I didn't expect to find Eric in such affluence. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, Doctor. Good afternoon, my brother. Is this Dr. Eric von Scherer's apartment? Yeah, yeah, that's right. It is it. Where is Dr. von Scherer? I will tell him that you are here. Lenchen! Eric. And Doctor. Hello. It's so good to see you. You haven't changed a bit. No, you. It's good to see you, Eric. Set dich, Lenchen. Oh, uh, permit me to present my assistant, Herr Schmidt. Well, uh, do sit down, Eric, and uh, tell us about your escape. But I didn't escape, Lenchen. But we heard that you had escaped to Russia. I uh, was in Russia, yes. On a mission for the state. Dr. Tauber said in his letter that you... I regret to say that Dr. Tauber is a traitor. He will write no more letters. But, Harry, Dr. Tauber was one of our oldest friends. How is he a traitor? To the Reich, Herr Doctor. Of which I'm now an official servant. But you risked your life that you could escape. Two years ago, I, too, had soft and sentimental ideas, as you will remember, Herr Doctor. Now I have learned a different ideology. I hardly know you, Eric. I have important business here for two weeks. Then I return to Berlin. The Reich is acquiring new territory, Herr Doctor. There's work for us to do. I've made arrangements for you and Laney. Uh, us? Oh, have no fear. I have influence in the party. I've arranged that this little difficulty of yours is forgotten. And then uh, we will return to the Reich. No, Eric. You are mistaken. Our home is now in America. Ridiculous. Does the fatherland mean nothing to you? The fatherland, yes. But your Reich, no. It is incredible, Eric. You look so perfectly healthy, and yet you have become infected with a disease more horrible and malignant than cancer. A disease that will be fatal to you and millions of your countrymen and to the whole Reich. Don't waste your sympathy on the Reich, Herr Doctor. <laughs> For a doomed patient, we are not doing so badly. How many times have you sat by your sickbed, Eric, and seen such an outburst of energy just before the death rattle? Come, Lynn. We will go on to Oregon. Laney! You cannot leave like this. We have traveled half across the world to meet here. Yes, Eric. And now that we meet, we do not even speak the same language.
Almighty God, in the shelter of this thy tree, O temporary temple, we ask thy blessing and thy mercy. We ain't no had time yet to build the church, Lord. Thou understandest it was mere important to build barns, silos, and homes. But in our hearts, our grateful hearts, is thy eternal temple. We thank thee for this rich soil to which thou hast led us, and for the strong and willing arms and sinews with which it shall be made fruitful and productive. And now, Lord, I stand before thee two of thy servants, this man and this woman, who in thy sight and in the presence of this congregation desire to enter into the sacred bond of matrimony.